All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's session. Uh, my name is Dr. Shorzi. I am a senior lecturer in the School of Chemistry and Physics at UKZN on the Westville campus. And I will be taking you through today's session. So for today's session, we will be working on questions that deal with rates of reactions. And we're going to be working through uh, the June 2021 and 2022 exams. Okay, I'm going to switch my video off um, to save bandwidth and avoid network issues, but I'll still be right here. Right, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see the screen. All right, thank you. Yes. Okay, so for both exam uh, papers, this is 2021 and 2022, uh, rates of reactions are usually asked in question five. So what I'm starting off here is the 2021 exam. Okay, so this question tells us that we have two experiments, one and two, which are conducted to investigate one of the factors that affect the rate of a reaction of aluminum carbonate with excess hydrochloric acid. And then they give us the balanced equation and the apparatus that is used to do this experiment. Okay, so we have hydrochloric acid, that is uh, poured into a flask. This flask contains solid aluminum uh, carbonate. And we can already see that it's already got some hydrochloric acid in it. We also have a syringe, okay? And because the syringe is not going right down to our solution here, we assume that the syringe is collecting any gaseous uh, substances that are formed. And if we look at our balanced equation, we can see that the only gaseous substance that is formed is CO2. So this syringe here is collecting CO2. All right. So remember there's two types of experiments. So in experiment one, I use a 100 mils of 1.5 molar HCl which reacts with 0 0.016 molar aluminum carbonate at 25 degrees Celsius. And in the second experiment, I have now less HCl, I have 50 mils, but a higher concentration, which is two moles per mil, reacting with the same amount of aluminum carbonate and at the same temperature. Okay, so the first uh, question, ask us to define the term rate of reaction. And this question is very common in exams. So it's a nice opening questions and it's a nice easy to marks that you can get. Okay, so as you know, the rate of a reaction is the amount of a substance that is used up over a specific time or it's the amount of a substance that is formed over a specific time. In both cases, we have to indicate that time is involved in the measurement because we are measuring the rate and the units of rate have time in them, whether it's seconds or minutes or hours. So for 5.1, you can say that it is change in concentration of products or reactants per unit time, okay? It can also be change in 
It can be the volume, depending on what you're measuring. It can be the mass. It can be moles, okay? So it's a change in volume or mass or moles of products. Sorry. Or reactants per unit time. Um, we can go on, we can say, like I mentioned, we can say it's the amount of or the amount the volume, the mass or moles of reactants that are used up per unit time, or we can say it's the volume, mass, or moles of products that are formed per unit time. Okay. In each case, this is the most important part. You have to say per unit time. The minute you don't say it, then the answer is wrong because then it's not a rate. Okay. So always remember to mention per unit time in your answers. Okay. Then question 5.2 says, using the experimental setup above, state the measurements that must be made to determine the rate of this reaction. And sure enough, we've actually touched on it in question 5.1. So if we look at this experiment, the measurements that must be made to um, measure the rate of this reaction is that we need to determine the time. So that's not where the uh, answer ends because remember it's for two marks. So you can say we need to measure the amount of time it takes for our aluminum carbonate, okay, to be used up, or we need to measure the amount of time it takes for us to form our carbon dioxide, okay? We cannot measure the amount of time it takes to form our aluminum chloride or our water because the syringe is only measuring CO2. We have nothing that is measuring how much aluminum chloride or how much water is forming. So just be careful. So for 5.2, for this particular experiment, we'd have to measure the amount of time it takes to use up Al2CO33 or can measure the amount of time it takes to form CO2, okay. And in each of these situations, our aluminum carbonate or our carbon dioxide will be measured in either volume or mass or moles. But uh, for this particular uh, question, we can see that they're using, using a syringe. So a syringe measures volume. So they're measuring volume of CO2 that is formed. Okay. And then question 5.3, and they also like this question as well. Use the collision theory to explain how the average reaction rate in experiment one differs from the average re uh, reaction rate in experiment two. Okay. So the only noticeable difference between reaction one and reaction two is the concentration of HCl. Okay, so for experiment one, we see we have a lower concentration of HCl, and in experiment two, we have a higher concentration uh, of HCl. So if we use collision theory, remember collision theory measures the kinetics or describes the kinetics of molecules um, for a reaction that is taking place. Okay, so we can say that
for experiments two, we have a higher concentration of HCl, okay? So therefore, we will have more HCl molecules per unit volume, okay? And therefore we will have more effective collisions that are taking place per unit time. And so our experiments too will have a higher reaction rate. Okay. Notice that the key phrase when you answer this question is this, this is what they want. They want you to see that this particular factor is speeding up the number of molecules or increasing the number of molecules in this particular reaction. And therefore, if you increase the number of molecules, we have more molecules that are colliding. And they like to use the phrase, instead of saying more molecules that are, that are colliding, you say you have more effective collisions per unit time. Again, per unit time comes up because we are looking at rates of reaction. Okay. And then question 5.4 says the average rate of the reaction in experiment two during the first 2.5 minutes is 4.4 times 10 to the three moles per minute. Calculate the number of moles of aluminum carbonate that remains in the flask after the 2.5 minutes. Okay, so what you need to understand in this question is that in the first 2.5 minutes, this is the rate. This rate is telling us that for every one minute, I am forming 4.4 times 10 to the minus three moles of CO2. Okay, that's basically it. Because remember, the rate is measured by the amount of CO2 that is collected per unit time. So these moles per minute are referring to the amount of CO2. Okay. Sorry, sir. Yes. So I'm confused. Why are you saying like per minute when they are they've told us it's 2.5 per minute uh thing per moles? So it's per minute because it's the rate. This is the rate of the reaction. Remember the oh. rate of a reaction, yes, is per unit time. So this is the rate. So um think of it. This way. Remember, rate is equal to delta N if we're referring to moles over delta T. So this is moles for this particular question, and the time is in minutes. Okay, do you get it? Oh, yeah, I get you, sir. All right. Okay, so there's two ways to answer this question. And for each of the ways, you're gonna get two different answers, but both would be correct, okay? So for this particular, for one uh, option, we can look at it with reference to CO2, like I mentioned. All right, so as I just showed you now, the rate is equal to delta N over delta T. Uh, this is question 5.4. Okay, so they tell me that the rate is 
4.4 times 10 to the minus three. I don't know what delta N is. They tell me that delta T is 2.5 minutes. Okay. So if I, what we're looking for here is delta N. And remember, I told you because they are measuring the rate of formation of CO2, delta N would be N of CO2. Okay, let me just get my calculator. So I get N is equal to, I can do it step by step. So it would be 4.4 .4 times 10 to the minus three multiplied by 2.5 equal to 0 0.011 moles. Okay, we're not done because the question is, wants to know the number of moles of aluminum carbonate that remain in the flask after two and a half minutes. So if I have number of moles of CO2, I can go back to my equation. Um, number of the relationship between number of moles of CO2 and aluminum carbonate is one is to three. So if the number of moles of CO2 are 0 0.011, number of moles of aluminum carbonate are equal to 0 0.011 mole divided by three. Three, seven more, okay? And the question is asking us how many are left after those 2.5 minutes. So this is how much is used up in the reaction in those 2.5 minutes. And the question told us that we started off with 0 0.016. So therefore, So I have 0 0.0123 moles. Okay. So this is if we take into consideration or if we use uh, CO2. Okay. Right. Another way is if you use um, if you use it on the basis of HCl. Okay. So if we use HCl, uh, the question tells us that we're dealing with experiment two. In experiment two, we know we have fifty mils of two mole per dm cubed of HCl. Because we have concentration and volume, we can get number of moles of HCl. Okay. So I convert the volume to dm cubed multiplied by the concentration.
I get 0 0.10 moles of HCl. If I go back to my equation, we can see that the stoichiometric ratio between HCl and aluminum carbonate is one is to six. So therefore, moles of aluminum carbonate in this case, CO33, 0 0.10 moles divided by six, Okay. Right. When we now go back to our question, you can see here that it says we started off with 0 0.016 mole. If I use HCl for my calculation, I get 0 0.017 mole. And if I had to subtract it from the original moles of aluminum carbonate, I would get a negative number. Okay, so I cannot use HCl in my calculation, which confirms that in my reaction, I have to measure the amount of aluminum carbonate that is used up over time or the amount of CO2 that is formed over time. All right, HCl. Uh, is not used to measure the rate of the reaction, neither does aluminum chloride, neither does water. So I did this because on, based on the information that is given in the question, some of you might say, hey, I can get number of moles of HCl, et cetera, et cetera. But as you can see that it does not work out, okay? Because what affects the rate of the reaction is how much aluminum carbonate is used up or how much carbon dioxide is formed. And last but not least, uh, question 5.5 says, calculate the maximum volume of carbon dioxide that can be prepared at 25 degrees Celsius in experiment one. And you need to take that the molar gas volume at 25 degrees Celsius is 24,000 cm cubed per mole. So in experiment one, just to remind you, I have 0 0.016 moles of aluminum carbonate that reacted. So Right. And if I look at my reaction, the relationship or the stoichiometric coefficient between my aluminum, aluminum carbonate and CO2 is one is to three. So therefore, moles of CO2 are equal to three times. you get 0 0.048 mole, okay? In uh, kinetics, if you check your notes, the formula, the relationship between number of moles and molar gas volume, remember is equal to N is equal to the volume over the molar gas volume. The number of moles, we calculated them to be 0 0.048. Um, the question is asking for the volume, and we've been given the molar gas volume as 24,000 cm cubed per Okay, 
I'm just adding the units there because um, Remember, we work so much when it comes to uh, concentrations and volumes. We work so much with DM cubed. You might be tempted to give your answer in DM cubed, right? So it's one of those ways that they try to uh, trick you. Okay, then we solve for V. Okay, so I get a volume of 1,152 cm cubed. And if you're feeling extra special or feeling extra happy, you can convert this to dm cubed, which is 1.152 dm cubed. Okay, but it does not matter. Okay, so that's basically um, the June 2021 exam. Uh, it was about 13 marks, so not a lot of marks for rates of reactions, but it's easy calculations. Just be careful of the tricks that they uh, try to pull. All right. Everything is usually straightforward, but they try to trick you because no one wants you to get 100%. Yeah. Uh, we're now going to move on to um, the June 2022 exam. All right. So, again, as you can see, it's question five. Yeah. So, learners use the reaction. Uh, magnesium carbonate with excess dilute HCl to investigate the relationship between temperature and the rate of a chemical reaction. Okay, so as you can see that teachers are not very creative or the Department of Education is not very creative because we're still using a carbonate, we're still using HCl, yippee. Okay, we've also been given a chemical, uh, balanced chemical uh, reaction. So we have magnesium carbonate, um, we have uh, reacting it with HCl, forms MgCl2, CO2, and H2O. So in this situation, they have not given us the experimental setup, but we do not need to guess what they are measuring because they've given us a graph which tells us that they are measuring CO2. Okay, so similarly, like the June 2021 exam, they just use different, uh, a different carbonate and a different representation to show you that they are measuring CO2. So creative. All right. Uh, question 5.1 asks you to determine the rate of the reaction, just like they did the previous year. So if you remember, we went through that already. So to determine or to define the rate of a reaction, it's the change in concentration of products or reactants per unit time, or it is the change in the volume or the mass or the moles of the products or the reactants per unit time. The key word being per unit time because the rate, the units of rates are a particular amount per unit time, time being in seconds, minutes, et cetera. In the June 2021 exam, our time was in minutes. In the June 2022 exam, our time is in minutes. Wow. All right. So that would be 5.1. Okay. For 5.2, they want you to state two conditions that must be kept constant during this investigation. Okay. So to make this experiment fair or scientifically sound, there are two uh, conditions that would have to be constant. Okay. So 5.2, because we are dealing with a solid, okay, a solid would have a particular form or a particular surface area. Um, okay, so if you go through your notes, you'll see that 
the higher the surface area of your solid that is reacting, the faster the reaction. Um, the state of your solid, right? So if your solid is granular, right? So if your solid was like this, like these granular particles, the reaction would be slower than if your solid was fine particles like that. Okay, so do you understand? Um, so you can see what they're asking here. So what we need to keep constant is, first of all, our magnesium carbonate has to remain a solid, all right? And secondly, our uh, particles have to be the same. So if I'm starting with granular particles, for the duration of my whole experiment, the particles must be granular. I must not now grind them up into powder and then do my measurements, okay? I must keep that constant. And last but not least, my concentration of HCl would also need to be constant, okay? Concentration of HCl would need to be constant because it is one experiment. Remember in the previous uh, question paper that we did, they had two different experiments. So in that case, because it's two different experiments, you can have different conditions. But here we only have one experiment. So the conditions have to be uniform throughout. We cannot change the concentration of HCR. Um, if I can, Give you an example. So if we look at the previous paper, if they were only doing experiment one and not experiment two, right? Do you see that if it was just experiment one, the concentration of ACL would always be 1.5 because there is no other concentration that is given. Okay, so that's what they mean. Okay, so we need to keep, I'm gonna say surface area or particle size of MgCO3, that needs to be constant, and also the concentration of HCl. Okay, and then if we look at question 5.3, uh, they're asking you to use the collision theory to explain the relationship shown on the graph. Okay, so let's look closely at this graph. So what's happening on this graph is that I start off at a temperature of zero, and I'm measuring how much CO2 is formed per unit time, in this case, per minute, okay? So this is the mass of CO2 that is formed per minute. And they do this reaction up to a temperature of about 43 degrees Celsius. So what they are changing in this reaction is the temperature, okay? Magnesium carbonate is constant, concentration of HCl is constant, but they're changing the temperature. And as you can see, as I increase the temperature, moving from 10 degrees Celsius all the way up to 43 degrees Celsius, there's an increase in the amount of CO2 that I form per minute. So in other words, there is an increase in the rate of this reaction as I increase my temperature, okay? So what does our collision theory tell us about temperature? Or rather, what does temperature tell us about the collision theory? That is what the question is asking in, in simple terms. So increasing the temperature, will cause particles 
to move faster, right? And of course, keywords, we're gonna have higher kinetic energy of the particles and no guess what's next we're gonna have more effective collisions because the particles are moving so fast so remember more effective collisions per unit time right and so the rate of reaction increases. Okay, let's see if we answer that question fully. Um, so there's four marks. And I have four facts over there, okay. So increasing the temperature is causing the particles to move faster. So the particles will have a higher kinetic energy. This will result in more effective collisions of the particles per unit time. And so the rate of the reaction increases, which is exactly what we are seeing on the graph. Okay. And of course they can't resist a calculation. 5.4 tells us that the learners obtain the graph above using five grams of magnesium carbonate with excess uh, HCl at 40 degrees Celsius. First of all, calculate the time taken for the reaction to be completed. And lastly, they want us to calculate molar gas volume, just like they did the previous year because of lack of creativity. All right, so let's start with 5.4.1, which is asking us for the time taken to complete the reaction. Okay, so they've given us an important piece of information here. They tell us that we have five grams of magnesium carbonate. Okay, so if I have five grams of magnesium carbonate, I have a mass, I have a chemical formula of a compound. If I have a chemical formula of a compound, I can get its molar mass. So just like I tell my first years, whenever you get information like that, like a mass of a substance, and you have no idea what to do, always calculate number of moles. You will get at least one mark without fail. Even if you don't know what to do for the question, always calculate number of moles. Okay, so in this case here, if you calculate the molar mass of MgCO3, uh, off the top of my head, because uh, I've been doing chemistry for the last 100 years, uh, molar mass of magnesium is 24, uh, carbon is 12, oxygen is 16. Okay, at university, Magnesium is 24.01, carbon is 12.01, oxygen is 15.99. Okay, but that's just me showing off. But it's 24 plus 12 plus 316, which is 48, and you should be getting 84 grams per mole. Let me just confirm that actually. Yes, okay. And so therefore, moles of MgCO3 is equal to five grams divided by my molar mass of 84 grams per mole. Mm. 
Sierra Plans 060. Malls. All right. We have my moles of magnesium carbonate right over there. So I can get the number of moles of CO2. Okay. Remember, uh, sorry, the question is asking the time taken for the reaction to run to completion at 40 degrees. Yeah. At 40 degrees uh, Celsius over there. Okay. And the reaction at 40 degrees Celsius, this point here, we formed about 0.5 grams per minute of CO2. Okay. But um, we're not there yet. So we'll get there just now. Um, if we have number of moles of magnesium carbonate, I can get number of moles of CO2 because the ratio, stoichiometric ratio, is one is to one. So therefore, moles of CO2 is equal to 0 0.060 moles. Okay. Then we need the molar mass of CO2. Why do we need the molar mass? Because from the number of moles, we need the mass because on our graph, the units of CO2 produced are in grams or the rates of the reaction or the rate of the reaction rather is measured in units of grams per minute. Okay. So the molar mass of a CO2 is 44 grams per mole. So therefore the mass is 1.060 multiplied by 44. And I get 2.64 grams, okay? Now, the rate is in grams per minute. Okay, that's in grams, that's the mass per minute, okay? At 40 degrees Celsius over there, I've extrapolated on my graph and I see that the rate is 0 0.5 grams per minute. Okay, 0 0.50 grams per minute. We've calculated our mass over here and they want delta T. Okay, so if you cross multiply by taking time across and dividing by 0.5, we solve for delta T. And we get 5.28 minutes, okay. So at 40 degrees Celsius at a rate of 0.5 grams per minute of CO2 that is formed, it takes 5.28 minutes for that to take place. All right. And last but not least, they want the molar gas volume at 40 degrees if 1.5 dm cubed of CO2 is collected in a syringe. Of course, they didn't tell us that, um, they didn't show us the experimental setup, but, but because we are wiser, we know that because they are measuring the amount of gas that is formed, they're gonna use a syringe in this reaction. Okay, so 5.4.2. So if you remember, moles is equal to the volume divided by the molar gas volume. Okay. Remember, we calculated the moles of CO2 to be 0 0.060. Okay. Um, they tell us that the volume is 1.5 dm cubed.
and they want us to calculate the molar gas volume. Okay. And if I calculate the molar gas volume, remember this is in moles by cross multiplication, I get 1.5 divided by 0 0.060 moles. And I get 25 moles. 25 dm cubed per mole. Okay. And that's it. Okay, so I just want to emphasize the recurring theme for these types of questions, particularly for the June exam, okay? So as you can see the recurring theme, and I'll just take both papers and uh, let's zoom out a bit. Okay. Yeah. So we have June 2021, we have June 2022. Okay, this is for your own learning purposes. So you notice that in June 2021, we had a solid, in this case, it was a car carbonate, of course, reacting with an acid, in this case, it was HCl, and they're measuring formation of CO2. In June 2022, they felt a little bit lazy, so they brought back a carbonate and HCl again, and they're measuring CO2. So we have some kind of solid that reacts with an acid and they measure the amount of gas that is formed. Okay. Here, they, told, they showed us the experimental setup. We had two different experiments that were performed. Yeah, the experiment was already performed and this is the results that they got. Okay, now let's look at the questions. Okay, so in June, 2021, they asked us to determine the rate of the reaction. In June, 2022, rate of reaction. In 2021, they asked us to mention something about the measurements uh, in this experiment, which relates to the rate. In, question, in 2022, they asked us about some kind of conditions about the experiment, which relates to the rate. In 2021, they asked us about the collision theory. In 2022, they asked us about the collision theory. Same question, 5.3 and 5.3, collision theory. And last but not least, in 2021, 5.4 was a calculation. Um, which was separated into 5.4 and 5.5, but still calculation relating to the product or the reactant. In this case, it was the reactant. So they wanted us to find number of moles. So they could ask you number of moles, num the mass, they could ask you the concentration, or they could ask you the time. In this case, they didn't ask the time because they gave us the time. Okay, in June, 2022, Again, they've now taken the same question 5.4, but they've put it in the same question. So um, in the previous year, this would have been 5.4, 5.5, but it's the same stand. This time is 5.4.1, 5.4.2. This time they've asked us for the time because they've given us the mass. So they could have also given us the volume or the concentration, right? In this case, in June 2021, they didn't give us uh, the mass or whatever. They gave us the time and we were asked to calculate. So you see vice versa, but uh, learn both methods, all right? And of course, calculating molar gas. In this case, they gave us the molar gas volume and asked to calculate the volume. Here they gave us the volume and asked us to calculate the molar gas volume. So learn both ways because either or can come up, all right? So, um, excuse me, sir. Yes. For 5.4.2, so we mm -hmm. calculated like VM. Yes. And uh, it was 1,5 over 0, 0,60. Mm -hmm. But when you put it on the calculator, you get 2.5. So I wanted oh. to know how, oh. how did you get 25? Okay. 
So what you've done there, you've made a mistake. So you told me that number of moles or the value that we've put is 0 0.6. It's 0 0.06. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Be careful, please. Um, those are easy marks to lose. Okay. If you have time at the end, always just go through your paper and check your calculations. Okay. Uh, let me just go through the chat. See if there's anything there. Okay, the secondary tutor has been attending. Thank you, Amanda. Someone said they can't hear me. Oh, that's impossible. Um, okay, um, so thank you, everyone. Uh, that's the end of today's session. I'm just going to stay uh, for a few, uh, two minutes in case someone has a question. So uh, what topic are we going to be doing tomorrow? I noticed it's chemistry tomorrow as well. Um, let me just double check for you. Tomorrow is chemistry. Are you sure? Let me double check, sir. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, um, you'll be doing chemical equilibrium tomorrow. Okay, so I think. All right, so tomorrow's chemical equilibrium.
Uh, Netanya, anything in particular we should pay more attention to for the exams? Okay. Um, I think they will be uploading uh, these recordings um, on the YouTube page of UKZN. Um, I can double check, but um, we had a previous two sessions on organic chemistry, which you would need to watch to check what uh, you should pay more attention to in organic chemistry for the exam. Today, I covered what you should pay attention to for the rates of reactions. Um, and tomorrow they'll cover what you need to pay attention to um, for the um, chem for chemical equilibrium. All right. Um, send the WhatsApp group link. What WhatsApp group? I'm not aware of that. Um, maybe in Togos, do you know if there's a WhatsApp group? Hi. Um, sorry, a WhatsApp. A WhatsApp group for what? Uh, Londiwe is asking for a WhatsApp group link to join. Oh yeah, there is. Let me try and post it here. Hopefully I can do that. Okay, Londiwe. So we might get help there. Thank you, Ndogos. Okay, Lundio, there's the link. WhatsApp. I think anyone else as well, please join the group. Do you have other questions similar that we can attend? Uh, unfortunately, due, due to time constraints, uh, this session is up. Um, however, I will ask the coordinators um, to send you past uh, papers. Uh, today we did June 2021 and 2022, but uh, there are other years on the Department of Education website. So just join the WhatsApp group and then you can communicate uh, these things easier. Okay, Douglas, you may end the meeting. Um, like I'm gonna exit, like, yeah, I'm done.